All right, guys. So today is Sunday evening and I am actually, well, actually Sunday night and I'm preparing for work, preparing for the week. And I know how it feels to have that feeling on Sunday, that feeling that says I am not ready to go to work. I wish the weekend was longer. I wish I had more time to do whatever it is you would be doing to uh, enjoy your weekend. And I want us to think about that biblically, because as I'm reading through the text, as I'm thinking through John 10, verse 10, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I come, Jesus saying, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I'm thinking about the issues that we face as we prepare for a new week, as we prepare to go to work. And I'm thinking about why is it that we dread going to work on Mondays? Why do we feel I guess perhaps the worst thing that could ever happen? And one of the reasons for that is because of the imbalance in creation that was caused by sin. You see, we are people of faith and we have faith in Jesus Christ, which ultimately means we have faith in his kingdom. We have faith in his purpose, his plan. But what that looks like is us standing in between or standing in the middle of what I like to call two realities. Faith puts us in the middle of two realities, the reality of our present and the reality of our of our future. It puts us in the middle of what is now and what will be. And we have to accept what is now, which is sometimes not very comfortable. And then we have to look forward and by faith live in the reality of what will be, which is the ultimate goal, the ultimate aim of us living and working as we do from week to week. There are a few things that I want you to think about. I want you to think about what it must have been like to live uh, before fall, before the fall of Adam. And then I want you to understand that as we have been reborn or rebirthed into the kingdom of God or born into the kingdom of God, we've experienced that new nature and that new life in Christ. I want you to see how not only do we get the opportunity to go back to that original state, but we now get the opportunity to excel and to go beyond that original state and actually fulfill the plans and the intentions that God had from the very beginning. So there are four things that I think you should know about how Adam lived before the fall. The first thing you should understand is that the world was dark and the world was chaotic. And in the first days of creation, God was bringing order to a chaotic situation. It was dark, it was messy. And even though things were pulled together and order was brought out of chaos, you can only imagine what Adam must have experienced as he looked around the world and he can see, if you will, the marks of a decayed or a previously chaotic world. It is as if the aroma of chaos still lingered and the expectation, the daunting expectation of maintaining the order that God brought out of disorder was something that he very well could have been thinking about. But the second thing, which will solidify the first uh, suggestion is the fact that Satan, the serpent, was literally present in the garden. He is lurking, looking for an opportunity. He's looking for a time where he can take advantage of humanity and find the weakness in the armor, if you will. Find a way to take advantage of a situation that is not being managed correctly. It's all indicative of the fact that even though the world was good, the world still had the fragrance of a world that seemingly came out of something very destructive, something very, very dangerous. It is as if God was hiding something from Adam, something that he knew if he found out about it, it would change his world forever. The third thing I want you to consider is that even though the world was good and even though uh, there was this sort of utopious, if you will, existence in the garden, the reality of it all is that Adam had a responsibility, which means Adam had to work. If we can put it even more plainly, Adam had a job. And the interesting thing about living in a utopious world is the myth that if we're living in a utopious world, we don't have to do anything. We were created to relax. We were created to just do nothing and enjoy life as we would have it. But the reality is, in the good creation where there's no chaos and where there is no disorder, there's still yet a responsibility to work, which makes 
us going to work and not liking it, something that we should seriously consider. The burden of getting up on Mondays, going to a job, going to a place, doing something should bother us if it is a burden because your human responsibility is always to be engaging in some sort of work. But the fourth point, which I think will help us with the third point, is that even though humans were required to work, the truth is they were never intended to work for the sake of providing for themselves. You see, this is where the tension comes with us having to go to work the next day or the next week, having to engage in a week of toil and 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 and, and uh, just working ourselves through life. It is the fact that deep down we know that simply paying the bills, simply having the car or the house or the clothes that we wear, working for those things simply isn't good enough. It is not fulfilling. It is not satisfying. And no matter how much we work or how much we have or how much we're able to acquire, deep down there is still a void until we get back to working for the purpose that God established from the very beginning. Since God was supernaturally responsible for providing for mankind, and since Adam was still responsible for doing some work, the question is, what was he supposed to be working towards? Adam was never supposed to work to provide himself food. Adam was never supposed to work to provide himself a place to live. Adam was supposed to work as a steward, as a manager over God's resources, making sure that the purpose of God is being respected, adhered to, and being reverenced as something that is necessary to the life of a person following God. He was supposed to be the example of what it means to live in a world that honors and respects the essence and the presence of God in that creation. However, he exchanged a life of supernatural providence for a life of human toil and literally, as God would say it, a life of sweating upon one's brow. That is working intensely to eat and to have a state of living in a state of providence. You see, this is where things get sticky for us. And as believers, we fight with this confrontation every week. Every time we go to work on Monday, we are saying to ourselves, here we go again. What I want to encourage you and what I want to submit to you at least at this particular point, is that perhaps you're living beneath your privileges. Perhaps you have not recognized that God never intended for you to work to take care of yourself. In actuality, God actually created you to work for the kingdom of God, understanding that as you work for his kingdom, you have an inheritance of abundant life that, that assures you have all you need to eat, you have a place to stay, and you have clothes to wear. You see, this is what Matthew 6 and 33 is all about. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. You see, God reversed the curse when Jesus came. The father reversed the curse that we inherited from Adam. And the son of God literally released us from the burden of death so that we might not just work, but that we may work and be productive. As you go into this week, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about how you can reverse the curse. I want you to think about how you can change your occupation. I want you to think about how you can work for the kingdom and not just for you and for your family. I want you to think about what it means to live in a life where God is taking care of you and you are taking care of the business of God. If you want to find out more about this, I actually preached a sermon about this this Sunday. I preached it and I want to share it with you. There's going to be a tag and a link in the comment box. If you want to hear the full sermon, I want to invite you to take a listen because I think it will be something that will change your life. I want to invite you to live beyond the curse. Enjoy your week. Be productive. Work hard for the kingdom and let God take care of you. Thank you all for watching. You have a blessed week. Until next time, God bless.